And at once he had preached and all other went to Patan to that king, present king, and they requested. Oh, he was he told that. Oh, I was looking for this, but you neglected me. For our uh, lack of dynasty of this apart from then he went. And as he went, at once, very easily, oh, smiling, and he went to the Jai Jagannath. Then, Patapurutra at that time, when Jagannath seated on the chair, and uh, before that, he was cleaning, being a very big king. And he was cleaning the path on which Jagannath is coming from temple to chariot. And what he was doing? Brahming with golden broom and giving uh, the rose water and orange and then rose water and perfume. So Jagannath became very high. Especially Chaitan Mahaprabhu. That being a so high class of king and being in the service of Ometa. And he was talking all these things with his associates. Then, you should know why Jagannath, who is this Patakarutra? You know who is this Patakarutra? Who? That he is still fighting and all. You should hear attentively. The history of the kings sweeping the road as Jagannath goes to his chariot is a very ancient one. The kings previous to King Kartapuruja did this dynasty, in that dynasty. Previous, previous to King Kartapuruja, the king was King Purushottamajana. <laughs> He was a very beautiful king with all good qualities. And very powerful. Very powerful. When he was about 24 years old, he had made an arrangement with the king of Vidyanagara that the king of Vidyanagara would give him, would give to King Purushottamajana his daughter for marriage. They hadn't met each other but they were communicating by messenger. The king of Vijayanagar said he would come and see King Purushottamajana, but he didn't say when. So it so happened, luckily or unluckily, that when King Purushottamajana was sweeping the road for Lord Jagannath at the beginning of the Ratayatra festival, the king of Vijayanagar came with his whole family to see in person who is this king. So, as we know, King Purushottamajana and all the kings wouldn't dress in royal dress. Though their broom was golden, they dressed as a regular sweet street sweeper in ordinary clothes to be humble to the lotus feet of Lord Jagannath as his menial servant. So when the king of Vijayanagara saw this, he thought, he's very beautiful, but he's such a lowly person, like a street sweeper. I'm not going to give my daughter to any street sweeper. So he didn't say anything, but he left with his family. Then a few days after the Ratayatri festival was over, King Purushottamajana inquired from his ministers 
that whatever happened to that king who said he was going to come and said he was going to give me his daughter. So his ministers told him what had happened. And King Purushottam of Jannah became very angry. He had no personal false ego, but he was angry because if someone considers the sweeper of Jagannath as an ordinary person, that's an insult to Lord Jagannath. Jagannath is God, so his sweeper must also be very glorious. So he decided, I'm going to attack that king. So he got his whole army together and he went to attack the king of Vidyanagara. Now that king of Vidyanagara used to worship Ganesh. So Ganesh personally fought against King Purushottamajana and his army, and they were very badly defeated. So King Purushottamajana was extremely disappointed, upset, and angry at Lord Jagannath. He went to the temple of Lord Jagannath, and he said to him, I'm doing this for you, I attacked that king for you. And you didn't even help me. I did it for your glory, and you didn't help me at all. He worshipped Ganesh, Ganesh helped him, I worshipped you, and you didn't help me. So Jagannath replied in an aerial voice, You didn't ask me, so I didn't come. <laughs> now you're asking me, and now I'll certainly come to help you. Again, get your forces together, your army together to attack, and somehow or other you'll know that I've come to help you. So the king was so enthused now, he got his army and the next day went to march to Vidyanagara. Now Jagannath and Baladev, from that form, took the form of two very powerful and beautiful soldiers. Krishna, Jagannath, was riding on a very big and powerful and beautiful red horse in royal dress, and Baladev on a white horse. And they went ahead of King Purushottamajana's army. And some miles ahead, when they came to Chilka Alalana by a very beautiful big lake, the biggest lake of the world, they saw a Gualini, that is a milk lady, selling her pot of buttermilk. So they were very thirsty by then and said, please give us some buttermilk. So the Gualini said, sure, I'll give you some buttermilk, just give me some money. So Krishna said, we have no money, we're just soldiers of the king, and our king is now coming with the rest of his armies for war, but the king will pay you. So she said, well, how will, I, how will the king have any proof that his soldiers came? So they said, here, take our rings. And the king will know that this is our rings, a signet ring. One saying Jagannath Singh, and one saying Baladev Singh. Singh means lion. So she took the rings, and they took the, her whole quantity of buttermilk and enjoyed so much. Then, some short time later, the king came with his army, and the Gwalini went to the soldiers and she said, which one is the king? So they pointed out the king and she said, so your soldiers came and took some of my buttermilk and they said, you pay. All, butter. All my buttermilk. And they said, you pay. So the king said, I have no soldiers that went ahead of me. All my soldiers are with me now. So she said, definitely they came. And they were riding on such and such and they looked like such and such. So he said, is there any proof? She said, certainly there's proof, here's their rings. So as soon as the king saw these rings, he was amazed and he thought, these are the rings that I had the blacksmith, goldsmith made for Jagannath and Baladev. So he was overwhelmed with happiness knowing that Jagannath had come to help him in the war. So he told the Gwalini, now look, not only will I pay you for all your buttermilk, but I'm so pleased with you that I'll give you a big uh, plantation, a big plot of land, and all of your descendants can enjoy living on that land. So to this very day, the descendants of that Gwalini are living on that same land given by King Purusha Majana. Then they went to the fight, and this time they defeated the whole army of the king of Vidyanagara. Krishna and Baladev personally 
tied up Ganesh. And what did they call Ganesh? Banta Ganesh. That means cheater Ganesh. Ganesh is a devotee of Krishna, and yet he was fighting on the wrong side. So they bound him up, the deity, and the king of King Purushottama Jana also uh, took a uh, Gopal deity to Kaka, his kingdom, and he took the uh, peacock crown, peacock throne of the king of Vidyanagar, and he brought that to his kingdom. He said, I'm not going to kill you, I'm just going to arrest you. He also took his daughter, not to marry, but to arrest and bring her to Jagannath Puri with the plan that, okay, your daughter doesn't want to marry any sweeper? Well, I'm going to marry her to my sweeper, any sweeper. So the ministers, the ministers told him, wait some time, and also she, the daughter, came to the ministers with him, and they said, wait some time, we'll make some nice arrangements for you. Wait for the next Jyoti Yatra festival to come. She was very busy for most people. Very beautiful and well Like to be and to be, she was perfect. So, in the next Jyoti Yatra, the ministers told her, okay, now is the time. Now you should approach King Purushottam Jana and tell him, yes, I'll marry a sweeper, but I'll only marry the sweeper of Lord Jagannath. When, when, when he was sweeping. But while he was sweeping. Yes, I'll marry a sweeper, but only the sweeper of Jagannath. And he was sweeping for Lord Jagannath. So he accepted her as his queen. And who was his son? None other than King Prataparudra. So what a glorious king is King Prataparudra. Is he, was he king in your but such a glorious king that his father had Krishna personally come to fight for him. When Jagannath Dev sat on his chariot, he went to this Subhadra so Devi first. Went to the chariot, and then Bhagavad Prabhu, and then in the last Krishna. But why this system is there? You know? You know? Why Subhadra went first, then Bhagavad and then Krishna? Oh, that history of. So oh, why you should not read that book? You have no time. So Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak a few words as to why Subhadra's chariot went first. And yesterday Srila Gurudev said that the third history of why Jagannath appeared is because of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime with Jagannath. In other years, he said this following history is the third history of Jagannath's appearance in that form. That is, just as the Brijbasis and especially the Gopis were feeling so much grievous separation from Krishna, weeping and practically uh, losing their life in intense separation. So on the other side, in Dwarka, Krishna is also feeling intense separation, weeping so much and sometimes becoming unconscious. Once, he was unconscious for a few days and his associates like Narada, Uddha, Baladev and others were in a quandary as to what to do. They were in a dilemma. That is, how can we bring Krishna back to consciousness? And second dilemma, when we bring him back to consciousness, he may, because he's feeling so much separation from Vrindavan, he may run to Vrindavan and will never see him again. So they had a meeting and a plan and they decided, Narada Muni will play his vena, singing Radhika Ramana Hame, Namane, and that will bring Krishna back to consciousness. But, because we don't want Krishna to run off to Vrindavan and never return, 
We should have a plan about that also. Uthav should first go to Vrindavan and tell the inhabitants of Vrindavan that Krishna is just coming now, so they should all become very happy to welcome him. When Uddhav heard that, he said, that's a very bad plan. Because Krishna sent me before, and I told them that Krishna was coming, and he never came. So if I go back now, they'll say, oh yes, that liar has come again. They'll never believe me. Their idea was that some associates of Dwarka would go first, and then, after some time of Krishna having the association of the Brijabhasis, that associate of Dwarka would very uh, carefully and intelligently remind Krishna to come back to Dwarka very soon. So then they said, well then, Balade should go. So Balade said, no, the same thing would happen to me. I went to Vrindavan, I was Krishna's representative, even danced with the gopis, I solaced them so much by promising them that Krishna will come. But I don't know what happened. Krishna used to be so merciful and so soft-hearted. But now he's become very cruel-hearted. And though I plead with him so many times, he never takes that opportunity to go to Vrindavan. So they'll say the same thing to me, that liar has come. No, I can't go. Overhearing this conversation was Subhadra Devi. And she interrupted and offered, I'll certainly go. I have so much affection for Mother Yasoda and for the Gopis. I'll sit on her lap and she'll caress me. And I'll tell her and the other Vrijabhasis, oh, now you can become so happy because Krishna is on his way. He may be delayed maybe one or two days because on his way so many kings and princes and very young, um, Important devotees may try to stop him for some short time with their presentations and prayers, but he's definitely on his way right now. And they'll believe me. So then Baladev said, Well, if Survivor goes, then I'm definitely going. So they called for Daruka, Krishna's chariot driver, and said, When we bring Krishna to consciousness, then you should immediately be ready for him and ride like the wind to Vrindavan. So they got the chariots ready, Subhadra's chariot, since she was leading, and then Baladev's chariot, and then Krishna's chariot. Now, as Srila Gurudev mentioned before, the Dayaka Gun, the uh, very strong, powerful, wrestler like devotees who were taking Krishna to the chariot. Although they're very powerful, they bound Jagannath with rope. It takes many, many hours sometimes to get him up to the cart. And he's not just very straightly walking along. They have these, um, it's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, these cotton-filled pillows. And they hold him, very big pillows, and they walk him from pillow to pillow, and all the cotton explodes. And then Jagannath goes from side to side, almost all the way down, almost all the way back, almost all the way front. So they have a very hard time keeping him steadily going towards the chariot and up the chariot. So there's a history to this also. Why is he doing so? Because when Krishna was going to the chariot on his way to Vrindavan, although he was in a hurry to go, he was so much absorbed in the love of the gopis, so much feeling intense separation that he was not in his proper external consciousness. So he felt happy. So overwhelmed that he couldn't be straight. He was falling and fainting and they were picking him up and he was going side to side. So that's the very beautiful history of the diet to gun that Srila Gurudev told before. Then finally they got Krishna to his chariot and they rode very quickly to Vrindavan. As soon as Krishna reached Vrindavan, he heard that Srimati Radhika was just about, in the very next second, to leave her body. And if he didn't reach there immediately, certainly she would leave her body. Now with Radharani or Lalita and Vishaka and all of her associates, even Gurudev said maybe Chandravali was even there to show her sympathy. And they were putting a cotton swab under her nose to see if she was still alive. And there was very, very slight breathing. 
They were all so unhappy. They knew this time surely she'll leave. There's no hope. Then all of a sudden Krishna arrived. And he was so overwhelmed seeing the love of Srimati Radhika that his heart began to melt so much. So much did his heart melt and so much was he weeping and rolling on the ground that that personality who was rolling on the ground became Lord Jagannath rolling on the ground as that melted form from his melted heart. And he was also uh, like about to die in feeling the love and separation from Radhika and the sadness of her condition. So then Lalita Vashaka told Radhika, Krishna's here, you can, you can now be happy. So Radhika immediately came to consciousness and she was so happy, but then when she saw Krishna in that condition, she told Lalita Vashaka that say a mantra in Krishna's ear and that will bring him back to his good, happy consciousness. Say in his ear, Radhe, Radhe. So they did that and Krishna came back to his external consciousness and Radhika and Krishna beheld each other in unlimited joy. So that's the history of Subhadra. God festival, not ordinary thing, but exchange of love from Sudanita. How that says expressive? Love him on love him. Radha was going to die. And Krishna, when she saw, he began to go over there. Went there to oh, to stop Radhika for this. But he himself then the Vishaka they used to know that how Krishna can, can come in sponsorship. So they told a very high class of powerful mantra in his. What was that? Oh, all 
were dance, uh, dancing. So Namo the Mukunda Basu Ho. Oh, they were singing by the street. And so Mudan did reach. And so sound was coming. Like clouds. And as if whole atmosphere was resulting Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladi, Jai Sri Sometimes Jagannath, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing on this phone. Sometimes oh, alone, but if we were at a time, we were dancing. In each group, at a time. But who, who saw? Only Pratap. And he told to Kashi Mishra, his guru, and saw Bombhattacha. Oh, you have done like a sweeper service. So, Mahaprabhu is very satisfied with you. And that is why you are seeing none, none are seeing. So you are very fond. You should not worry that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has no mercy to you. He never wants to meet you, never wants to see you even. So don't do that. A time will come when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or motion of mercy or just mercy book, oh he will restore his mercy. So he was like this. Sometimes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in front of Chaitanya, one dancing so free and so fast. Chaitanya you to see and they stop his chariot or get to move. And smiling. And sometimes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sachinandan, wanted to examine Jagannath. Oh, that if Radha is not going, Radha is my friendship. Thank you. If I am not going, then what he is doing? So he used to be behind the hall. And at that time, Jagannath, oh, not seeing Radhika in front, that is Sachinandan though, and he used to be the stop. So, like this, Gaur Jadi Pache Chale, Shyam Bhai Dhir Istire, Gaur Chale Age. Sham chale dhire dhire. But in this way, oh, okay. as if in Braja, if Krishna and Radhika are meeting, or sometimes it will come like this. If Krishna is saying that Radhika is that Kunji, oh, he is here too. And if not so that Radhika is there, then only where is Radhika on there? And then, oh, all the singing, all the seven groups and millions of persons were oh, pulling the caps, chanting. At that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, oh, he was doing the now, wishing the name as mother. Jayati Janamibhaso, Devaki Janamabhado. Jadu Vara Parishat Sukkar Doro Bhiras Tilchara Prijinatna Svasthu Kaila Kaya Pura Bhagitana Bharat Kayan Bila Asa Eta This is slowly very very important. Having all the past times, three past times of Krishna in one day is slow. And then he began to uh, chant some a slogan, and it was so sound at that time. Oh, anyone was not hearing what song he is doing. 
very loud and if there is some hearing but what are the meaning and purpose of that song so they could not understand only one for this song sound that you do what is the meaning what is the mood of the song and what is the mood of chaitanya mahaprabhu what was that is so the kumara next place this is more important this is the essence of part festival yo om gyanati vrandasa gyananda salaka chakshu So we better have a word meeting to speak a few words describing the verse that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to utter at this the time of Ratha to Mahamahotsav. This verse contains the essence, the deepest and most internal meaning of Ratha Yatra, and therefore. Oh, unless one becomes absorbed in the mood of this verse, he really cannot observe the festival uh, in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, I will try to do it. Sorok Dabadar and especially Sri Lopu Goswami Pai. So we see that when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come before the deity, then Sorok Dabadar would utter slok and also Mahaprabhu would sing. ಯಾಕೌಮಾರಾಹರಾಸೈವಹಿ <laughs> Why this verse is not from the Paramatic Shastra? It is not a verse of Shrimad Bhagavatam or any Upanishad, or it is not a verse of Gita Govinda or Bhuva Mangal Thakur. What is this? This is a verse from a book of the Prakrit Alankar Shastra, mundane poetry. That book is called Sahitya Darshan. And this verse is describing the mood. of one lady what happened when she was very young before her marriage at that time she became attracted by the qualities of a very beautiful boy and during chaitra mas the month of chaitra mas means march sankari april that is chaitra mas is spring time when the full moon enters into the constellation of chitra nakshatra that is called chaitra mas so that period corresponds to about march or april in the western part the spring time so once in the spring time when oh a very sweet breeze was blowing from the forest of kadamba trees and in that breeze there was a fragrance of malati flowers or oh, all of these things of the nirvana to stimulate the to inspire lovers to meet together at that time she met with her Beloved, they were not married on the bank of a river called the river, and in one kunj of vetasi, vetasi trees came. This has some sharp thorns also, and oh, they came together and they met there. And at that time, oh, she heard she that boy or oh, stole her innocence. But then many years later, she married that same person, and years and years went by. and after many years then she was uh, not feeling satisfied she saying oh now i am not so happy in my life and in my relationship even though i am the same person and he is same person i am remembering those days when we were very young and oh breaking all religious principles and not caring for any problems or anyone's opinion secretly Oh, we met together on the bank of Rainbow River, because at that time 
There was so much good conduct, so much eagerness to meet together, and so much playfulness and curiosity was there. I remember those times and think, oh, I wish I was back in those days. So this verse, this verse is a mundane poetry, and this is even according to the rules of literature, this is Rasa Bas. There's defect in this because it seems to be against Dharma. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through this verse of a Prakrit uh, Kavita, mundane poetry, he was relishing our Prakrita Rasa, transcendental love. How is it so? No one could understand. But Srok Dhammata knew. And one year at the Rath Festival, a new boy came there. And his name was Sri Rupa. Sri Rupa. And when he saw Mahaprabhu uttering this verse, because the heart of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the heart of Rupa Goswami, they are Tadatmi. So as Mahaprabhu was uttering, then his internal mood automatically reflected in the heart of Sri Rupa Goswami. Sri Chaitanya Manovishtam, Stavitame Kabutale. He knew his most internal mood and he composed a slope, a parallel slope, which describes how Mahaprabhu was really feeling and what he was remembering at that time. He wrote it down on a palm leaf and he kept it in the hut, in the thatched roof of the cottage of Haidas Thakur. And he went away. When Mahapu came there, he saw, oh, what is this stuck in the roof of the hut? And pulled it out. And when he read it, then his heart was overwhelmed with joy. And Rupa Goswami came back and gave his pranam to Chaitanya Mahapu. Mahapu gave him a slap. Hey, Roof, how is it? How did you know my heart? Hmm? In disbelief, he turned to Saurabh Damada. I said, how did this person know my heart? Saurabh Damada said, oh, but you can tell the, um, the tree by its fruits. So similarly, you can understand that Rupa, by the fact that Rupa Goswami knows your heart, it means only one thing, that you have, must have bestowed your full mercy upon him. Sri Chaitanya Pipavaro Bhugivavo Bahavanantarako Vande Sanatana Vandivivo He was filled with the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and therefore he composed a parallel slok explaining the first one. What is that? Priya so young Krishna Sahatari Kurukshata Milita Tataham Saradam Taridam Ubayo Sangama Sukam Tatapyanta Kela Madura Murali Panchamadushe Manome Kalindi Vipina Bulinaya Spihati In this verse, this verse is spoken by Radhika. This is the internal word. Shimati Radharani, she's telling her friend when Kurukshetra Militas, at the time when all Brijvasis came to Kurukshetra and had the opportunity to meet with Krishna after a very long time separation. And in the night time, oh, all the gopis and Radhika would meet with Krishna and sweet pastimes would take place. But Radhika is saying, oh my dear friend, oh, I am the same Shrimati Radhika and he is the same Krishna. But I am not happy here. Why is that? Because I want to be there on the, in the forest of Vrindavan, on the bank of Jamuna, at the Bhongshi Bhak, Vidhuvan, Seva Kunj, and other places. And there, I want to meet with Krishna, oh, and hear him play upon his flute. On the fifth note, my heart is very eager for that. Why? Because here at Kurukshetra, it is only one drop of the ocean of nectar which is present there in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, all oh, bumblebees are humming and moving from flower to flower. And cuckoo birds are singing and peacocks are calling, Teka, Teka. But here at Kurukshetra, what goes on here? Elephants are rumbling here and there and chariots and soldiers and generals and weapons and everything. There's no nectar like Vrindavan. Oh, he, there in Vrindavan, Krishna is like a beautiful coward boy wearing the peacock feather in his hair, playing upon his flute with Pitava and Gopavesh and Gopavesh, absorbed in his mood as playful coward boy, the son of Yashoda and Nanda Baba and Gopita Navalabha, beloved of all Gopis. But here at Kurukshetra, uh, how is he? No peacock feather, no flute, no Pitava, no Gopavesh. How is he? He's like a king. 
with 16,108 queens and wearing armor and weapons like a, a, a prince, a soldier even. So, though there's a chance to meet with Krishna here, I don't like to be here. My heart is very eager to be back on the bank of the river, not river, river Jibuna, and or in the forest of Vrindavan. So, by these verses, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu expressed the essence or the speciality of this, our Gaudiya Sampradaya. What is that? Karakiya Rasa Bhakti. Radha and Krishna are not married. So, this love is far superior. Yet, the Shastra, any books, they're not written about Karakiya Mood. So, Mahaprabhu took one verse from the Sahitya Dharma in which the unmarried relationship had been described. This unmarried relationship is so very, very much superior because it has many ingredients which make this Premaras or Chamatkar very astonishing and beautiful. When lover and beloved meet, but they are not married to each other, then because of Yolabhata, Nirvaranata, Prachamakar, Kamakata and Bhangyata, by these ingredients, oh, their brain comes to the highest level. Dolabhata means it's very difficult to meet, very hard to meet together. Why? Very difficult. Oh, they're not living together. Like queens, Krishna and queens, they live together, they can easily meet together. But Radha and Krishna, oh, they're staying in different places. And they, it's very hard for them. Many obstacles will come. This is the meaning of Vaitasi Tarutale. The Vaitasi grows that Mahaprabhu was mentioning. This, these are hard and thorny. This means so many problems. But even though so many problems come in the way of the love of Radha and Krishna, their love cannot be checked. Just as when there is a big storm, a tornado comes, and it uproots all the trees. All the trees are uprooted, but Vaitasi, the cane trees, they are never uprooted. So in the face of many, many problems of oh, the love of Radha Krishna, it cannot be uprooted. And therefore, because of this Dolabhata, oh, their love increases more and more. And Nivarnata, Nivarnata means this love is forbidden. Hmm? Everyone will say no. Mother-in-law, father-in-law, husband, all relatives, society, and Guruji, they will tell, you cannot go, you cannot meet with him. So because of this, huh, this is another big obstacle. Yet this also increases their attachment for each other. Hmm? And also, Prachanda Kamakata, because they are threatened by the members of society, that they cannot meet together. They will have to hide their love inside. They cannot express. If you are cooking, or then if you keep the lid on the pot, then it will, it will become very... Uh, so, if you take off the lid, it will not cook quickly. But if the lid is there, you will cover it, then it will become very hot. So, because Krishna, Radhika and Gopis of Vrindavan, they have to hide their love for each other. Therefore, they have no expression for this. Therefore, their love becomes higher and higher, more and more intense. And Bhamyata. Bhamyata means all oh, contrary mood. In married life, in Vedic culture, the wife should be very submissive to the husband. She will have to serve him. And she will consider he is like her master and representative of Supreme Lord, like Guru even. So she has to be very submissive. If he will say anything, she does not agree. She cannot argue with him. She will have to remain silent. But so, there is a difference between the hearts of lover and beloved. Or one will be in low position and one in high position. So because there is no equality between them, then pranai, the feelings of oneness and intimacy, they cannot increase to the highest point. But in the Parakya Rasmakti, in the devotion which is characterized by unmarried relationship, therefore they, they, they are equal to each other. They are not married. The husband can tell the wife, oh why are you behaving like this? You should get out of my house. But if Krishna will tell Radhika, oh, you should go from here. They will tell him, you don't own this place, you get out of my country. This is, this is not your place. The wife is indebted to the husband. Why? Because he maintains her. He gives her saris and bangles and food and all things. But Krishna, what did he give to gopis? He's not feeding them, clothing them, giving them a place to live or anything. So they're not dependent upon him. So because they are not dependent on him in any way, then they have no mood, no dilution of the Madhurya Ras comes from Dasubhav, the Savita mood. So they can have Bhami Bhav. Bhami means contrary. If Krishna will come and sit next to Radhika, she can turn her face the other way and ignore him. No need to get up and respectfully meet with him. So is this a good thing? 
Oh, it is in the Kam Shastra mentioned these are the arrows of Kamade, very, very powerful weapons by which the heart of one's beloved comes under control. So Radhika by her, the Bhamya Bhav, contrary mood, or she can control the heart of Krishna. And also, in this Parthiya mood, what happens? Many gopis come to meet with Krishna, and between them, Prema Prati Yogata, competition. Chandravi and her sakis are trying to make Krishna come to the Chandravi's kunj. Radhika and her sakis are trying to make Krishna come to Radhika's kunj. So there's competition, and sometimes there's victory and defeat. So this competition of love between all gopis and Vrindavan makes the love go to the very highest level. Therefore, Bahu Kanta Biranahi Rasa Rahulas Vila Rasahaya Lagi Bahuta Prakash Radhika herself has manifested in the form of Lalita Vishaka, Chicha, Champakalata, even Chandra, Vishaka, Padma, Bhadra, and others who are Vipaksha in opposite groups. And in this way, uh, by the Bahu Kanta Biranahi Rasa Rahulas, by Krishna having many beloveds in Vrindavan, all competing with each other, then praying goes to the highest level. But what is happening in Kurukshetra? Though they are meeting, these sweet pastimes, this inspiration cannot come. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reciting the verse of Sahitya Rakhman, which is the abhas of the Parakya mood. He, through that, he was relishing Parakya mood and remembering of the separation that Radhika was feeling, even though she came to Kurukshetra to meet with Krishna. And these things have been very clearly explained by Srila Rupa Goswami and by Guru Bhargav, so that we can have a chance to see into the very confidential heart of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And through the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaura Prema Rasa Vane, Ye Taranga Jeva Dube, Say Hoi Radha Madhav and Taranga. Those who will be immersed themselves uh, in the ocean of the love of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or when they will emerge from that, they will realize oh, how they have become the Dasi of Sri Sri Radha Without this, this is the life of court festival. Also. And if this is not, then what? Lifeless court. This is the, this was the message of Philip Postman.